subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. By now, everybody is an expert on the Pegasus project controversy. By now, you also know all the names that have come out. And there is speculation about more. The fact is, over the next two to three days, more names will be coming out. So there is no point my chasing that ball because that's tra traveling too fast. What I'm going to do today is, first of all, tell you how this hacking is carried out. Although I suspect by, the, by this time, a lot of you know about it. And most of you know more technology than I do. So I will keep it simple. Second, I will tell you about this company, where this comes from, and also some really important global, international, multilateral, legal aspects to the sales of this kind of software. And then I will talk about some prominent names that have come up, not all, not even a fra fraction, but some, and put those in perspective. Those are the ones where I might have some understanding or might be able to at least speculate in an educated way on why some people might have been surveilled. So first of all, uh, you know that this is done through spear phishing. What is spear phishing? Again, spear phishing, spear is spear. Uh, you know Pegasus name. What is Pegasus? Pegasus is a character from Greek mythology, the white flying horse with two giant wings, the son of Poseidon. Uh, even if you, if you haven't read too much of Greek mythology, you might have seen the film Poseidon Adventure or might have read the book by Paul Gallio. I think the book came out late 60s or sometime. I read it when I was in school. Nevertheless, Poseidon's son, mythology, uh, flying white horse. The important thing is, on top of the white horse sits somebody called Bellerophon. Now, who is Bellerophon? Now, Bellerophon is supposed to be the warrior who tamed this horse, who tamed this mythical Pegasus. And he thought that riding this, he'll go to the top of Mount Olymp Olympus and then to heaven. On, it, on his way, he fell and he died. But that is not the important part of the story. The important part of the story is, see those pictures and see what is that warrior carrying Bellerophon. What he is carrying is a spear. Now, that spear is a metaphor, I suspect, for this spear fishing technologies. Spear fishing means you go and punch a hole in something and then you put your stuff in through, the, through it. It's not very dif different from the way say the coronavirus invades our cells. Coronavirus has its spike, the spike goes, locks, into, locks onto our EC, ACE2 receptors and then effectively burrows a hole in the cell and goes and plants itself in our cells. That is precisely what this software does. That is why spear phishing, P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. And I suspect that's why the name Pegasus because what this is referring to is not the horse, but but to the warriors, to the weapon the warrior is carrying. Metaphorically, you can now say that just as that warrior failed, maybe this has also failed because Pegasus now and the company that makes it, NSO, is in bad order worldwide. It's already facing multiple lawsuits in America, including by Facebook, sizable lawsuits, and chances are this company is now on the verge of bankruptcy. So what is this company? Once again, this is something that we need to know. NSO. NSO basically are the first initials of its three founders. Its three founders was Neve Carmi, N-I-V-C-A-R-M-I, Shalev Julio, and Omri Lavi. So Neve Carmi say N, Shalev Julio S, Omri Lavi O, N-S-O. These three used to work in a super secret and super effective unit in Israeli intelligence called Unit 8200. Now, Unit 8200 in Israeli intelligence has only one job, which is to produce signal intelligence. Signal intelligence, as we know, is another name for electronic intelligence. So these were experts who came out of there and they set up their own company in 2014, 2013, 14. 2013, they just had a revenue of $40 million. Within two years, 2015, it was $150 million. <clears throat> some foreign company, some foreign investor put money into it. And soon enough, 
in 2017 it was sold for more than a billion dollars and when it was sold it was sold to two of the three founders as Shalev Julio and Omri Lavi along with a fund the fund is called Novalpin Capital so once again what was NSO earlier now Neve Karmi had gone but you could now say that Novalpina Novalpina Capital is the N in the name and then they made a big success of it globally. The first fame of the company came from the Mexicans very early when the company had just been founded or was just doing basic work and they produced a very basic early primitive form of this kind of software and Mexico used it to catch the notorious El Chapo. Once they caught the notorious El Chapo that gave them a reputation because the Mexican president at that time publicly thanked this company. So when that happens, their fame spread and other countries discovered it. And you know what happens then? Countries then figure out various other uses for it. And you can see that many of the countries who are now making the global headlines in this joint project by so many publications uh, across the world, most of these countries now have a reputation of undermining civil liberties, targeting political rivals, etc, etc. So this is a weapon that fell in the wrong hands. The wrong hands are not ordinary criminals or mafiosi or smugglers or terrorists. These wrong hands were the states that wanted to use this weapon against their own rivals or people they don't like, journalists, activists, politicians, anybody, judges, anybody and that is what these lists coming out from all these countries and you will see the names of these countries on the screen as we talk that is what these lists tell us because there is a certain pattern in the kind of people who are being targeted in these countries unfortunately India is also in that category right now whatever denials go government of India puts out in fact I had explained how this works in somewhat greater detail in episode 307 of which I am sharing a link when this controversy first broke almost two years back on a much smaller scale. So please see that but right now I am just telling you this very briefly. Now when I say weapon I mean it because this is a weapon. Pegasus software is not a software it is a weapon system it is classified as a weapon system it qualifies to be a weapon system the Israeli government treats it as a weapon system subject to export controls which means this company NSO cannot export any of its wares in fact NSO's all of NSO's products are protected exports. So all of it needs the clearance of the Israeli government. So Israeli government then decides there's an application from a certain country's, country's government. NSO can only sell to <coughs> other sovereign governments and that application has to be approved by the Israeli government. Because you know why? Because globally now many agreements have come up to control the exports of dangerous weapons and most importantly, most dangerously dual use technologies. Technologies can, that can be used by good guys for bad guys. Technologies that can be used to protect good people from bad people but technologies that can also be used to harm good people on behalf of bad people. So dual use technologies are controlled by many countries in the world, more than 50 countries in the world. In fact, this comes under something called the Wassenaar arrangement. Wassenaar is a little suburb of the Hague or the Hague. Uh, I think in India we mostly say the Hague uh, in the Netherlands. And that is where this agreement was first uh, arrived at and India became a member of the Vasenar agreements in 2017. In fact, I'll share with you a story that the print did explaining what this means and what India's joining the agreement means. What this means is that these countries then exchange notes, that is exchange information on sensitive technologies that it might be exporting. And then the Vasenar arrangement has different lists. It has a list of first list of priorities, second list, then the most sensitive. So sensitive, more sensitive, most sen sensitive. So this kind of a system would be described as the most sensitive weapon and put in that category. So this will be, this will be subject to many controls including what's called as end user monitoring agreement, EUMA, which means 
the country that's selling it to the other country has the right to monitor its use. Now for this company to say, we just sell this software, we don't know what some country does with it. Saudis might have or might not have used it to, uh, to target Khashoggi, but who are we to know once we give it to them, it doesn't work like that. Because this is subject to military export controls and EU MA. Israeli government and NSO have the right and also the responsibility to keep track of how this is being used. So those are important things to understand as we go into the sort of the more headline hitting aspects of these revelations because this is all that lies behind these revelations. Spear phishing and you know uh, this is a cat and mouse race uh, as companies like this come out with better technologies, better software to hack then companies that run communication or that make your phones etc. That is Apple or people who make the Android system, Facebook, they all keep working on counter technologies. So Apple in fact says, I saw in Washington Post a quote from an Apple spokesperson saying that just over the past two years they've cleaned up many of these things, bugs that they had found which made their systems, iOS systems vulnerable to Pegasus. But now it looks like Pegasus has gone one step ahead because you know bad guys usually stay ahead and bad guys don't have to get right, get it right only once. Good guys have to get it right all the time. This applies to this race as well. So now this Pegasus and also earlier iOS systems initially were a bit safer. Now they become more vulnerable. Because now Pegasus has the ability to one, send you a trap link, which means you get an innocuous email. Sometimes it might look like uh, it's from a friend of yours or somebody is offering you something and you might touch it and that plants malware in your system or that spears brain of your uh, computer or your phone or these are also zero click links, which means you can't, don't even have to link, click them. And these will come to you as iMessages on iPhone systems. So you really have nowhere to hide. Once again, we presume that Apple will work on this and fix it and then we don't know what will happen. But the chances are that I think NSO itself is now going to be in deep trouble because in Israel also the government has changed. The previous government, Netanyahu government, one, Every government works in its own self-interest and every government looks after its country's commerce also. So it's not as if this government will just go after this because Netanyahu was uh, allowing all this. But the fact is that so much is the international global opprobrium over this that this government in Israel now, the new government will have to take some action. Israeli parliament, I presume, will be discussing it. Also, added incentive would be to show up the Netanyahu government. Now, once again, I will share with you a tweet from Michael Safi of The Guardian. And he says, with a picture of Narendra Modi and Benjamin Netanyahu walking on the beach in Tel Aviv and in 2017 July, when the Narendra Modi became the first Indian Prime Minister to visit Israel. That was a famous walk on the beach. Uh, <clears throat> and he said that... It was just in the week of that visit that the first list of names to be surveilled in India was selected. I mean, that is how these dates are matching up. And we, can, we are also now know that this software was provided to India, India's agencies, whichever agencies, sometime in 2017 because that pattern is very, very clear. Now, having explained this, let me also tell you... Uh, some politics and some context of some of the names that have come in. Now, Prahlad Patel. Now, the important thing is, looks like whoever was using this was targeting not just adversaries, but their own as well. Now, you, why do you target your own? You target your own, one, if you have some suspicious suspicion about them. Across the world, spouses engage private security agencies to spy on each other because they have suspicion. They are very close, they are married, but they have suspicion. <coughs> Husbands do it, wives do it. So one is adversaries is obvious, but friends, you might do it because you want to check somebody out. You might do it because you have concerns about somebody and you might do it 
because within your system you might see somebody as a rival or a likely rival or somebody as not fully compliant because what this does is that it's not it's not as if you will find criminality on the part of people and try them it will give you some information about people which can you can use at the right time to get the person to comply with your wishes so let's go over some names prahlad patel now prahlad patel was minister of state for culture with independent charge in the recent reshuffle he's been downgraded he's become minister of state in jal shakti mantralay important ministry but now just a minister of state not an independent charge now if you look at him i can understand the foes priyanka gandhi rahul gandhi they are the foes what about the friends among the friends he looks like having been the most heavily surveilled because looks like his entire family his entire staff almost 15 people were surveilled for some time so i don't know what led to what but if you want you can draw a connection and say he got downgraded ashwini vaishnav again friend i'm leaving the foes out ashwini vaishnav he's just become a very powerful minister he's got a dual portfolio railways as well as it he also became part of a great irony today when he stood up in parliament and said that the story was all entirely exaggerated and all that and my and mindful of the fact that just as we were talking the washington post and the guardian were releasing a list of more people indian politicians which included his name as well so why was he put under surveillance earlier maybe the bjp wanted to check out his loyalty to the party maybe that's the way a super power party does talent hunt for people i don't know i'm just trying to find some context to bjp's friends being put under surveillance friends one who has been downgraded one who's been upgraded so there is no straight line ashok lavasa former election commissioner we understand because he had trouble uh, with the government because he raised objections to several things going up to the 2019 election it was evident the government modi government did not want him to stay long enough to become chief election commissioner then he faced income tax troubles also and chose to leave india to go to asian development bank now that we can understand uh, not justify now rahul gandhi priyanka gandhi aids their aids prashant kishore uh, Abhishek Banerjee, Mamata Banerjee, Banerjee's nephew, all this in the run-up to Bengal elections. Again, uh, you can understand. Once again, when I say understand, I am not saying you can justify because the whole what was the Watergate scam? Watergate scam was Nixon and his people spying on the Democratic Party in the run-up to an election campaign. So this was Watergate raised to the power many times over. If this happened this way, and frankly in this case you can't even say. that oh we don't know some rogue element might have done it because nso only sells to government sovereign governments and nso cannot sell without israeli government's clearance so those are things that we have to always keep in mind so these these people i understand rahul gandhi priyanka gandhi their aides prashant kishore abhishek banerji understand is not justify i have to keep saying again and again Hari Menon, the head of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, strange. But if I read the Washington Post story, there's an interesting connection that he was put under surveillance around time. Parent Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, was deliberating giving Narendra Modi their big global award or not. So, was he under surveillance because somebody wanted to keep an eye on his activities and there were suspicions on him? Maybe it was something as simple as some spook wanting to be the first. to tell the prime minister that look sir i know that you are getting this award and get some brownie points in exchange but what does it tell you it tells you that a weapon like this a very strong cyber weapon which is subject to export controls which is subject to be used only by governments where the one sovereign country is selling it to another sovereign country has the end user monitoring agreement and rights even that kind of a weapon can be used by freelancers or buccaneers within any government so this is a bit of that jagdeep chokar association of democratic rights they make a lot of noise about this anonymous electoral bonds and all that and you know uh, you might want to keep 
uh, if you are the government, you want, might want to keep tabs on him. Once again, understand is not justify. I am only put, putting this in perspective. Personal Secretary Vasundhara Raje, when she was Chief Minister of Rajasthan, uh, Pradeep Avasti, she, it's, it's the most open secret, the most poorly kept secret in the BJP that the current dispensation in the BJP has never liked her. And I think it's quite mutual and it's also coming out now in the way the politics in the state is playing out. In fact, one politician, senior politician, very close to her uh, in Rajasthan has just now been suspended by the BJP. So her PS, when she was chief minister, he was under surveillance. Then Sanjay Kachru similarly, who was briefly officer on special duty to Smriti Rani when she was minister the first time, he was watched and also Praveen Togadia. Praveen Togadia, we know the history. We know that he is a former international president of Vishwa Hindu Parishad. But right from the days of Gujarat politics, he and Modi are at odds with each other. In fact, Narendra Modi had even arrested him and threatened also to lock him up under the toughest laws in the laws on national security in the land. And quite deliberately, I had kept one name as the last in my little short list of all the hundreds of name that's, names that have come out. That is the Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan. And the reason I kept him last was that that is at least one name that any intelligence agency in India, Indian intelligence, would find perfectly legitimate to go and put under surveillance. And if they were able to break into his phone, fantastic, well done. Somebody deserves a big award for that. Very impressive to get into your rival country's chief executive's phone with one catch that what Imran Khan knows, what he says on his phone, what messages he gets, he may not exactly know what's going on in Pakistan vis-a-vis -vis India, etc. because power in that country sits with somebody else. So maybe would have been better to catch somebody in the JHQ, General Bajwa, or maybe they did that also, I don't know. But the fact is, if you go and attack Imran Khan's phone, successfully, how the hell do you get caught? That is not forgivable because the fact is that this has now been outed. This has now got caught. So once again, I conclude this episode on this note. So please do watch this space. There'll be more fire, fireworks. And before you go away, just check out, have you joined our YouTube community or not? Because we talk a lot together. Once you join the community, I talk with you directly myself. So hit the join button. It's only 159 rupees a month. So please do join right away.